call me Jazz, 19 years old from Cebu City. And for today's video, as you can see, I'm wearing a Filipino traditional clothing because I will be featuring one of the indigenous crafts in the Philippines, which is Bornai Jazz. So if you're interested, just keep on watching this video. Bornai jars are made from vegan Ilocosur in Luzon, the heritage village of the Philippines. In the city of Pagbornayan, the RNJ factory is the iconic pottery place in the vegan city. The Pagbornayan comes from the root word Bornai. It refers to the handcrafted earthenware pots, the Bornai jars. It is made of clay mashed by carabaos and mixed with sand. How and by whom? The one seen in the video is Fidel Antipordago, a national folk artist. He will show how to make the traditional vegan Bornai jar. It is done with the use of pottery's skillful hands and use of pottery wheel and kiln. The fine sand is used to temper the clay and to come up with the desired shape. It is placed inside a high temperature ground kilns made from brick and clay. Bornai jars earlier use were for tea drinking and as a container for salt, brown sugar, water, local wine, and bagoong. But nowadays, people buy them mostly to serve as decorations inside their home and gardens. I hope you've learned something from this video. Thank you for watching! Welcome to my vlog. Make sure to watch this full video for you to quench your thirst for knowledge about the Filipino's culture. So check this out. As for now, I'm pretty sure you're wondering why I'm wearing this cool new look hat, a plain white shirt, and a neckerchief like a boy scout. Well, for your information, I am a proud Filipino. And this suit that I'm wearing right now has a complete touch of simple yet stunning presence of Filipino wisdom. <laughs> but before we would reach to that point, let me first introduce myself. The name's Julius Carabino Montos. In the years of existence, and I was born and raised here in Cebu City, Philippines. And for you to love more about the Filipino sculpture, I will introduce you to an indigenous craft which is truly handmade by the Filipinos. It is completely simple, yet a laborious process to make. Now take a look at this. This is an original handcraft by the people from Batanes in the northern part of the Philippines. This is called Vakul. Vakul is a long laborious process to make. The palm leaves are dried under the sun shredded into thin parts and woven carefully. It can take a month for a weaver to finish making one bakul. It is a traditional headdress worn by farmers in the fields to protect them from the sun and the rain. And now to further expand your learning, the people from Batanes will teach you more about the bakul. So you better watch and listen to this carefully. Makaya po do kapay bayabayat amaman 
dadu kapan ked am asa kadu minggu u kakawusna yang ai namun ya hapunu ya buya ya sirbina mendu katukutukunan kan dauriu karuan hitumu wa buya bui nu matatar ka sirbian nu buya bui am nu kaparin siapa kul kanai kana buya Manuma paringindu kapan kedaya sebakulam tacire no hubid uah hukab as kapak kolibut so so tendu irah lumau no hukab pasit nane ni aduhu amai pai bawa. The vakul is pretty much the same with the hat that is running right now, isn't it? But this vakul is designed to withstand the scorching heat of the sun and the coldness of the rain, and that is what makes it cool. Isn't that right, Mahatol? Well, if we are on the same page, then let me hear your comments about this video. Or you can just reach out to me in any way you can. So that's it for this vlog, Mga Tol. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have learned a lot from me. And of course, see you in my next vlog. Bye-bye. Adios. Because in this vlog, I will bring you to Bulinao, Pangasinan, Philippines! Philippines is an archipelago consisting of around 7,640 islands. Now, we will travel virtually to one of these islands located in Luzon, specifically in Bulinao, Pangasinan, the Santiago Island. Santiago Island is known for its Bulinao mats or Bulinao Bani, woven by the Manug Banig in their locality. To make the state-of-the-art buri mats, colorful strips of leaves are interlaced at right angles. The Manugbanig harvest the buri, rafia, or buntal leaves from the palm trees. Second, the leaves are exposed to sunlight until it is perfectly dried. Then, it is cut into strips and woven into mats, which may be plain or intricate in design. The heart of Bulinao mat weaving rests in a small village called Salu, a peaceful barangay where most of its residents are dedicated to weaving the best buri mats. Here, almost every resident knows how to weave like it's a religion for them. This mat weaving activity of the Manugbanig, aside from providing a source of income to support the needs of the family, it also reflects a sweet culture of the island. Bulinao mat weaving reflects Pangasinan's tradition of love and courtship. While in most old rural areas in the Philippines, singing, writing poetry, or even fetching water are the man's ways to win a woman's heart, in Bulinao, Pangasinan, a man courting a lady must before all else literally weave his way to her heart. Old folks even tell stories of love while weaving these mats. They say that every bachelor here who intends to court a woman must know first how to process the buri leaves for weaving. How romantic it is to have someone who goes through the arduous task of processing the buri leaves for you to weave. This has been El Chain Baklaan, 19 years of age, from Serao, Cebu City. Hi everyone, I am China and I welcome you to my class. So, for today's video,
video, we will be talking about a specific indigenous craft in the Philippines. So, what is an indigenous craft? An indigenous craft is a product that are manually created by an ethnic or tribal groups in the Philippines. So, some of the examples are balik, basket weaving, and clothes weaving. So, in today's video, we will be tackling about this specific um, indigenous craft and by the end of this video, we will know what are their uh, artistic and social purposes, how and by whom they are made, and of course, where these crafts are made from. So, let's go! So what is a burnai? A burnai is an earthen jar with a small openings. I am choosing this indigenous craft of vegan elocosur, which is the burnai. With a solid quality, creativity and hard work of the people of creating this product is fascinating. Kudos vegan! When thus Bornai started? Bornai started dates back to pre-colonial times when immigrants from China came to settle in vegan. Burnai are earthen jars made of clay mashed by carabaos and mixed with sand. It is done with the use of potter's skillful hands and use of pottery wheel and kiln. The fine sand is used to temper the clay and to come up with a desired shape. It is placed inside high temperature ground, kilns made from brick and clay. Its earlier use were for a tea drinking and as a container for salt, brown sugar, water, local wine, and bagoong. Nowadays, people buy them mostly to serve as decorations inside their homes and gardens. That is all and thank you for listening and watching. Kudos to everyone. Mabuhay! I am Hannah Mabel Marikit, 20, living at Cebu City. And today I am going to show you something that we Filipinos must be proud of. Today I am going to share one of the most well-known, most famous and traditional textile here in the Philippines known as the Inabel. Inabel is one of the many prides of the Ilocos region in the Philippines. Abel means weave and Inabel is used to interpret any kinds of woven fabric. So you might ask, where is Inabel made? Inabel is one of the many prides of the Ilocos region in the Philippines. Inabel is famously made by Cordilleran people of Northern Luzon. It is made of cotton and may be plain or patterned. Another! How is Inabel made and who made this? This beautiful work of art is made by preparing the yarns by starching to provide stiffness and stability, winding the yarns into spools to form threads.
laying out the warp threads. Then the process of weaving starts. Feeding the weft threads into the warp threads to form textile. Hand tying the tassels. And we are done! In Pili, Ilocos Norte, centuries worth of history and tradition find their finest incarnation in the hands of 96-year-old Magdalena Gamayo. Born in 1924, Gawad ng Manlilika ng Bayan, awardee Magdalena Gamayo is a master weaver of the Inabel cloth. And lastly, what are the artistic and social purposes of Inabel? Inabel serves as the livelihood for many people in Luzon. Way back then, Spaniards considered the textile to be of such excellent quality that they were allowed to count as taxes. Inabel was also used as sailcloth in the Spaniard's galleon and it became an immense opponent of the Spanish weaving industry. So that's all for today. I hope you have garnered something from me and something from this vlog and I hope that you will also be proud of being a Filipino. Inabel, you are forever loved by your beauty and strength. Thank you for bringing pride to our country, Philippines. I am Marian Marona, a BSA student, first year, and welcome to my vlog. In this video, we're gonna talk about Evoc an indigenous basket made by people living in Batanes. But first, I just want to give you some background information about um, indigenous art and how it was embraced by our country, Philippines. Art was embedded in our culture since the very beginning up to the present time. It is one thing that can never be lost in a culture no matter what it goes through. The Philippines Having a rich culture also has its own share of art that is practiced and applied in a day-to-day -day living. One of those is Indigenous art. It is the artwork created by the indigenous people or the traditional people who come from our land. Indigenous people are living anywhere in Philippines. There are who came from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. That explains why there are a lot of indigenous crafts all over the country. These crafts are made through different processes including weaving, carving, blacksmithing, painting, and many more. I have said earlier that this video is, um, is for me to show you how Evoque is made and what is it made up of or what is its purpose. So, to start off, Yuvok is originally made in Batanes. It is a secluded island that can be found in the north. Actually, it was a low-key island at first, but eventually turned into one of the most beautiful tourist spots in the Philippines. For the past years, it was visited by many, not just by Filipinos, but also by foreigners from different parts of the world. Yuvok is a sturdy, wide-mouthed, ovaloid basket used by women to carry harvest. It is made of didit or nito strips 
intricate woven over a framework of tiblas vine and bamboo. It is done through the process of weaving. To look closely to it, here are the step-by-step -step procedures in making evoke. Evatans used evoke as um, first a farming container for women since they, they are um, one of their livelihood resources is farming. So they used evoke to transport uh, as a storage for um, the crops that they have harvested. Second, as a um, counterweight counterweight when um, climbing mountains. Mount Third is as a lampshade since we all know that Batanes is very prone in very prone in typhoons. So when typhoon hit hits Batanes um, they put the possibility of um, electricity loss is very high. So they use um, lampshade as an alternative for um, light. Lastly, a decorative material, so very basic. Um, Yuvok is beautifully made, so there's no doubt why um, they used it as a design for their homes. The bull oil or the tinagtago is an ifugao anthropomorphic carving that symbolizes an ifugao rice cut or guardian spirits. It also signifies fertility and is sometimes believed to house spirits of ancestors. A bulul has a simplified shape of a human being, whether male or female. It consists of a simplified head, a torso, and a pair of hands and legs mounted on a platform for stability. So usually this sculpture bulul is carved out of strong nara or evil wood and sometimes stones. So the bulu size also vary depending on its use. So these are usually made in pairs, which is male and female, but some are done individually. So this traditional art form may seem crude, lacking sophistication, but it has been praised as a fine example of abstract art. So although due to the beautiful scenery, scenery and the artistic indigenous crafts in Ifugao, it became a tourist spot and bulos are now produced and sold as a variety of souvenir items or decorative art. But it is actually a fundamental part in Ifugao culture wherein bulul plays an important role in their agriculture. So it is involved in the ritualistic aspect of rice production from rice planting up to the safekeeping of the harvest in rice granaries. So the sculpture is made mainly as guardian of rice granary. The process of creating Ibulu includes the Bakira ritual by the Mumbaki or priest to ensure its power and the ritual called Tunut, where during the rice planting season, the Bulu is touched by hands deep in chicken and pig's blood. So this bulu, this sculpture, it is regarded with care and respect because treating it otherwise is believed to result in hostile manifestation 
such as sickness and pestilence from the spirits or ancestors. That is why Bulul is regarded as one of the famous indigenous crop here in the Philippines, mainly located in Ifogao. Good day everyone, my name is John Perla Botor. I am 20 years old and I was born here in Cebu City. So for today's video, the topic will be about indigenous crops. Materials in the country are being converted into various kinds of creative crafts by the indigenous people. There are a lot of indigenous arts and crafts that still exist. We have products from cloth weaving, basket weaving, wood sculpture, and many more. But before we talk about the main character, which is the indigenous craft that I have chosen, allow me to share what I have also learned when I was researching about indigenous crafts. So on July 2013 to January 2014, there was this exhibition that was made possible through a generous help from Fowler Museum at UCLA. In that exhibition, they showcased the Philippine basketry of the Luzon Cordillera. Cordillera, this is the mountainous part of the Philippine island of Luzon. So if you were to search the site of SFO Museum, you could discover there the selection of 20th century Philippine basketry of the Luzon Cordillera. There is what they call kulikog, which is a basket for unripe to rice. They have tudong, which is the woman basket and rain cape, and a lot more. But the main focus of today's vlog is this indigenous craft that was also showcased at the exhibit that I have mentioned earlier, which means this was also made in Cordillera by the Ifugal people, and it is named Balyag. Balyag, this is a basket of the Ifugo people to carry crops, specifically sweet potatoes. Again, a carrying basket for sweet potatoes. These baskets are made of bamboo, rattan, or it could be a combination of two. The most frequently utilized construction technique entails plating, although wicker work, twining, or coiling are also employed. Plating, it's just like you're braiding, you're interlacing strands. Wicker work, this is a technique for making products woven from any one or a variety of pliable plant materials. When we say pliable materials, these are those that would bend free. People could choose the way they want to create the basket, but the most frequent technique used is again plating. So we could ask, why did they create a basket specifically for the purpose of carrying sweet potatoes? It is because while rice is the most prestigious staple and ritual in the Cordillera sweet potatoes or camote provide food for the majority of the population. More easily cultivated than rice, sweet potatoes can grow almost anywhere. They provide sustenance for people and domestic animals. Women transport extremely heavy loads of sweet potatoes home from the fields in baskets supported by a strap worn across the forehead. So to summarize it all up, we have an indigenous craft named Balyag, made by Ifugal people in Cordillera, to carry sweet potatoes. So before I end this vlog, I really hope that people would learn to appreciate indigenous crafts here in the Philippines, for it took a lot of time, a lot of effort, determination to create such beautiful pieces. I hope people would help promote or spread the word of these crafts, for this could be helpful to craft makers, especially those who have these as their source of income. So that is it for this video. I hope you learned something from what I have shared. Goodbye and stay safe. Bye. Hello guys, I'm Melvin Yanis Caminade. I'm 19 years old and born from Cebu City. This video, I'll talk about Balisong, an indigenous craft from Bratangas. Balisong or butterfly knife is made in Taal, Batangas. 
that became known as Balisong capital of the Philippines. Balisong is a type of folding pocket knife. Perfecto de Leon is the known man that started making Balisong in 1900s. The word Balisong was derived from Tagalog words Baling Sungay. That means broken horn. The first Balisong knives is crafted either from a horse's bone or water buffalo's horn. While the blade is made from recycled automotive bearing steels. The modern Balisong knives are made of stainless steel while the materials used for handles varies from a stag horns from fiberglass wood and some are made entirely of brass the balisong making in the taal batangas was commonly used by filipinos especially those in tagalog region as a self-defense and a pocket utility knife in the hands of a trained user the knife blade can be bought to bear quickly with one hand. Here's a video of how the balisong is being made. And that is the Balisong, an indigenous craft from Batangas. Thank you for watching. Hello there, I'm Maria Teresa Ikatanda, ABS RAM student, 22 years old from Torisay City. Now, let's talk about basketry, and I want to present this specific basket from the Kalinga tribe. It's a basket called Lava. Some baskets are ceremonial, that is religious in nature, while baskets are usually used for harvesting, storage, and transport. This basket is used for carrying, storing rice or vegetables. It is also used for ritual purposes. Lava baskets have a rattan base so they can safely be set down without spilling the contents. The basket is very durable with the rattan strips adding strength to the shell as well as providing a convenient handhold. The lava is a bowl-shaped basket made from finely split rattan and little vine, with sizes varying from 20 to 150 cm in diameter. Kalinga, a slime stuck with those mountain dwellers occupying now the territory of Kalinga province. The basket is made perfectly symmetrical to maintain its durability with the use of the weaving technique. This is not just an ordinary basket, but it became a part of their culture and tradition as a representation of their identity. Knowing the different indigenous crafts here in the Philippines is a great way for us to preserve traditional knowledge and talents as it promotes heritage. Thank you!
my kababayans. I am Teresita May Kunahap, 20 years old, born and raised in the beautiful island of Bantayan, and I will be your companion for today. As Filipinos, we've always been so proud of our country's culture and the arts. Its vibrance and richness speaks a lot about our roots and is one of the reasons why it feels so good to be a Filipino. And right now, we will be exploring a yet another beautiful craft here in the Philippines, the Katukong or Tabunga Hat of Abra. Abra is a landlocked province of the Philippines in the Cordillera Administrative Region in Luzon. It is famous for its various crafts and products, and one of its most renowned is the Katukong or Tabunga Hat, popularized by the gawad sa manlilika ng bayan our day, Chofilo Garcia. The Katukong is an indigenous hat of the Filipinos, particularly the Ilocanos. It is also known as Tabunga Hat since its main material is dried tabunga reinforced with nito woven at the rim. In case you're wondering what tabunga is, it is an Ilocano term for upo, also known as bottle gourd or white pumpkin. For centuries, the Ilocano people in the northern Luzon have worn the katukong or tabungao hat. It is used primarily as an all-weather headgear. High school children wear them for graduations, and farmers shelter themselves under their brims while plowing fields. And according to some Ilocanos, katukong have even been donned by revolutionaries charging into battle against the Spanish in the earlier times. The intricate design of the katukong is supported by finely split bow slats to protect the upo from being broken and deformed from its natural round shape. The hat is further finished by varnishing it to make it shiny and attractive and to enhance and preserve its color and durability for more marketability. According to Chofilo, he learned the necessary skills from his grandfather at the age of 15 and from then on, he decided to dedicate his life in continuing the tradition of his roots. Because of his dedication and passion for his craft, he was awarded as a national living treasure for hat weaving in 2012. The Gawad sa Manlilika ng Bayan or the National Living Treasures Award gives recognition to Filipino traditional craftsmen whose skills have reached a high level of technical and artistic excellence. Being the last of the Tabunga hat makers, Chofilo has extended his knowledge to local school children who attend his workshops. Since 2014, the students of San Quintin National High School have been making their own Tabunga graduation hats. However, unfortunately, after graduation, None of the students are interested in continuing their studies with Chofilo, which leaves the skills of the bungao making in danger of becoming extinct. The katoko or the bungao hat is just one of the many indigenous crafts here in the Philippines that needs to be preserved and taken care of. I hope that this short exploration of ours made everyone realize how blessed we are to have such a rich culture and roots. And allow me to end this video by saying, I am and will always be proud to be a Filipino. Mabuhay, Filipino! Hello everyone, this is Divina Grisagatan back at your screen with a wonderful content because right now, this time, we're going to witness the beauty of our country which is the Philippines. And when I say the beauty of our country, I do not only refer to the places, the tourist spots, I also refer to those people, our people, who created and built our country a eh? wonderful one. The Ifuga people have an indigenous religion unique to their traditional culture and highly significant to the preservation of their life ways and valued traditions. The 
Ifugao are world famous for their spectacular rice terraces, especially in Mayoyo and Banawi where entire mountainsides are sculpted like giant steps. That's just one of the many things they have made. What I will be introducing to you is one of their indigenous crafts, Ulbong. Ulbong is a woven container with cover and braided handle used for storing husk rice and pounded rice from mortal and pestle. And this is the Ifuga way of pounding their rice. The base of Ulbong is actually made of coiled single flat piece of rattan and it is sealed with clay or mud. It is primarily used to protect the rice from unwanted insects and keep the desired rice moisture and taste for days. Each household would store pounded rice so it will be ready for cooking. Containers like these are kept inside the Ifugao traditional house or the Bali house and it was a practice to keep this container filled with some rice contents. That is all. So see you again on my next vlog. Thank you for watching. The Philippines is a tropical country in Pacific Ocean, blessed with beautiful natural landscapes and extreme weather patterns. Philippines is a culturally diverse country with its topography consisting of mountainous terrains, dense forests, plains, and coastal areas. The indigenous people of the Philippines consist of a large number of Austronesian ethnic groups. They are the descendants of the original Austronesian inhabitants of the Philippines that settled in the island thousands of years ago. Welcome to the Philippines. Iba't iba ang tao sa mundong ito Isa ang kulay ng dugo Lingling O was made by the indigenous people coming from mountains of Cordillera. Lingling O is used as either earrings or a necklace pendant by a Filipino tribe in the island of Luzon in northern Philippines. The Lingling O that is worn by Ifugao, Buntok, and Kalinga in the mountains of Cordillera are frequently made of silver. The amulet is empowered before wearing it and believed to have Anitas living in them. Lingling O is considered valuable fertility charms and are often wedding gifts. A symbol of prosperity and love and also a symbol of motherhood. Indigenous people showed a high degree of creativity such as the production of bowls, baskets, clothing, weapons, and spoons. These peoples range from various groups of Igorot people, a group that includes the Buntok, Ibaloy, Ifugao, Isneg, Kalinga, and Kantanayi, who built the rice terraces thousands of years ago. Philippines are also rich of cultures and traditions. Philippine population was also comprised by different ethnic groups from different regions.
the Philippines is rich in biodiversity. Hello, I am Christian J. Fernandez and I will be talking about two of the most well-known indigenous materials in the Philippines which are wains and lufeli, or commonly known as the igorot attires. In this video, I will highlight the materials used, method in making the crafts, and the purposes of these traditional attires. In the mountain province of the Cordillera region, a tribe known for its traditional and brave people called Igorots can be found. The term Igorot is an old Tagalog word which means mountain people. These indigenous people has three unique costumes that distinguish them from the other Philippine tribes. These costumes reflect their way of life, cultures, personalities, religious practices, and rituals. Made up of buntok fabrics through the exhausting process of weaving, the Igorot attires have colorful horizontal stripes with varying shapes. Igorot men wear long strips of hand-woven loincloth called wains. Generally, the costume is known as bahag or g-string. The primary purpose of the bahag is to cover the male's private parts. And after covering the male organs, it is then wrapped around the waist to prevent it from falling off, especially during dance rituals. On the other hand, Igorot women wear lufid which is also known as tapis or wrap around skirt. It is a rectangular hand-woven garment wrapped around the waist and held tight by a thick woven belt called wigs with its ends left hanging at the back. There are different types of lufid identified by the buntok weavers, and each type is usually based on the main features of the design. There is no doubt that wains and lufid are indeed indigenous materials, all thanks to the Igorots who still manage to maintain many of their customary beliefs and practices. And it's no wonder you'll witness or experience cultural events whenever you visit Igorots communities. I'm 10 years old and I was born in Mindanao and I grew up here in Cebu City. this vlog, I will be introducing to you one indigenous craft that is found in Luzon, which is called Paseki. So what is Paseki? And where is the place of origin of Paseki and who made them? Paseki is an indigenous basket backpack that are made by the various ethno-linguistic group of Northern Luzon, particularly by the Igorot ethnic groups in the Cordillera region. How is Pasekeng being made and what are its common materials? Pasekeng are hand-woven traditionally and the common materials used in constructing it are rattan and bamboo. What are their artistic and social purposes? Traditionally, Pasekeng are worn in mountain province of the Philippines 
It is used to carry goods and equipment and also even if carrying nothing as just a raincoat. Because the rattan pasekeng are known for its durability even in the inclement or rainy weather. Since the rattan contracts when wet, making the weave tighter and less prone to splitting.